We are joined by Long Beach State head coach Alan Knight and student athlete Shane Holdaway after a 3 nothing defeat in the semifinal round of the 2023 Outrigger Big West Men's Volleyball Championship presented by the Hawaiian Islands. We will start by asking coach for an opening statement and then open the floor to questions from media members in the room. We ask all media to please identify yourself and your outlet before asking your question. Coach, if you would please just start us off with your thoughts on tonight's match. Yeah, you know, uh, obviously we've seen these guys now three times in a week, so um, it's it's really hard to be a good team, you know, three times, and uh, they're they're a good team, and especially with uh, with Heno playing like he did tonight, he was great, and uh, a lot of credit is to is to Irvine, I and mean, they played they played really really well. Um, it's not our best match, but I think we know that. There's a lot of parts of the game I think we could have been better at, um, but the, the focus is on how well Irvine played. Uh, they did a great job. Uh, it's, it's probably, when you look at the way the matches went, it's probably about right to be 2-1, you know? For, it, it probably a, one team winning all three was probably gonna be a little bit much. Uh, now that I look back, I would say I didn't feel that way going into the match. Um, but it's, it's not ideal, you know, we don't, you never wanna lose, but when, when you have three of the top teams in the country playing in your conference tournament, there's gonna be two teams that lose, and they're gonna be disappointed. The good thing is, is that we feel like um, our body of work is pretty solid, and uh, we'll prep to play uh, next week in Virginia. Uh, Mike Gardabasio, uh, five six two. Alan, that was my first question. Is just, um, you know, how confident do you guys feel in your case? I know I've talked to you on many of these occasions yeah. when you knew that it's not in someone else's hands, and when it when it is in someone else's hands. So, how confident do you feel in uh, in, in your guys' case? Yeah, I mean, you're not in the room, so you don't, you don't have a say, but it, 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 it's, it, what they have done really well in the last couple of, ter last couple of years is they're pretty, it's pretty clear cut now with RPI and the way they, the, the way they talk about all the criteria. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we, we had a great year, you know, the, with our wins at, uh, at Penn State and at Hawaii, and uh, you know, the only other losses was to UCLA and then tonight. I mean, that's, You've crossed off a lot of boxes. We play teams in every single conference. We played a balanced schedule. We didn't play all our matches at home. We ended up, we got good wins on the road, and you do that for a reason. Unfortunately, you know it's not it's not what you're looking to accomplish is to make sure you have the yeah large bid, but you it, knowing in this conference that you need a backup plan. There's too many talented teams, so we feel really really good about that. But obviously, some things need to. Uh, that, that happen also too. You need uh, you need top seeds to play out. Not not all of them, but you need you need most of the top seeds to play out. Good evening, Coach Taryn Rodriguez, host of Set Point Volleyball Podcast on IE Sports Radio. What were some positives from your team in tonight's game that you can probably carry over to next week? Yeah, you know, I I, I thought at times we offensively we were pretty good set in the middle. We did a good job. We just they, they did such a good job serving that we just uh, we just didn't have enough rhythm there. Um, I thought there was a lot of things that we did that, that turned into long rallies that the last couple of times we played these guys that we won most of the long rallies, the tough points. And tonight, the longer the rallies went, Irvine won those. And uh, those are important points to get and they're momentum. They, they build momentum throughout the match. So, um, yeah, I, you know, I, I'm proud of our guys for lots of things and, and what we've done all season long. So tonight, you know, it's, it's not the match we want to play. We can't dwell on that too much. What we got to do is start prepping. Um, Coach, you know, as you guys' sport is growing, it's like there's still some of these weird schedule foibles where you play a team, <laughs> you know, yeah. three times in, in eight days. Yeah. Um, how does that change the way you prepare, or how did that change maybe the way they were able to prepare for you guys? Like, what does that add to the story, I guess, of, of the last uh, week and change? Well, you know, it, it's really hard to make a lot of changes in a lineup when you're winning, you know, and I think that probably the best case scenario is the, the matches that Hawaii, when you play Hawaii during the year, whether it's in Hawaii or at your place, when you play them back to back, um, you know, it's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of adjustments that happen. And you know, a lot of times the team that lost the first night will make, makes a few more adjustments, maybe even personnel adjustments, because you're a little bit more freed up to coach um, to make those changes and try to get a little bit of a spark. So, um, you know, I, as, the, as the matches went on, you know, we won 3-0, we got down 0-2 and won 3-0. There's not a whole lot you want to make. I did make quite a few changes in our lineup and flip some guys back and forth, but it really wasn't that about that. It was a, it, it, like always at this time of the year, it comes down to the, the ability to create pressure from the end line and not miss a ton, and the ability to handle their pressure from the end line and be able to stay in some sort of resemblance of an offense. 
Doesn't always have to be perfect, perfect, but, um, and, and, and they won that battle tonight, and we won that battle the last two matches we played them. And then coach, talk to us about how Nathan Harlan has become a great security blanket and Swiss Army knife for your team. Yeah, there's a, there's nothing Nate can do on the volleyball court. You know, he can play on the right, play on the left, he, and he has great serve. He can set for us and trans. There's a lot, yeah, and, and, and he did a great job tonight. Um, so, yeah, with, Nate has played in every single set in some sort of role, so coming in like he did tonight is nothing new to him. So we're, uh, we're lucky to have Nate on our team. Um, Shane, I know you've uh, been through, you know, I don't know how many big matches with this team at this point, but um, I saw you in different moments talking to Spence, I saw you talking to, um, you know, Siapanis, trying to calm him down at different moments. How important do you feel it is for you to step up as a senior the way that you had seniors sort of over you, you know, when you were younger? How, how important do you think that role has been for you to um, try and take a leadership role with those guys? Yeah, I mean, it, it helps me stay present in the game as well. Um, obviously, everybody on our team is a huge competitor, as I am, and everybody wants to win. So when tensions do flare, it's just part of the game, getting everybody back together. And, um, you know, we love competing together. And so back when I was younger, obviously, we had other guys doing that, and I look up to them, you know, Josh Tuaniga, TJ DeFalco, uh, Ethan Siegfried back in the day, and, uh, you know, just really trying to carry that torch. And then Shane, obviously you'll be getting most likely more volleyball, best case scenario. What have you learned the most in your volleyball career at Long Beach State with Alan Knife and the rest of the crew? <laughs> we'll be here all night. Um, man, I mean really, it's uh, Alan has really taught me that the sport of volleyball is more than just winning and losing. It's about taking everything in stride, learning what you can from every match, regardless of what, if it's a win or a loss. And that has been huge, not only just for me, but other guys on the team. And, you know, it really helps us uh, move on from these matches where we feel like we could have played better and prep for the future. Hello, Coach. Uh, Cindy Lewis. Hi, Cindy. Hi. Sorry. Um, barring any episodes tomorrow, um, do you feel like the Midwest deserves both that large? And how do you see the match between Irvine and Hawaii tomorrow? Um, it, it, I, it's hard for me to say that because I, I, digging into all the criteria, you can go down that rabbit hole. From what I've seen and what I just saw in here, um, yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> that's, a pretty, that's a pretty impressive team and, uh, and they can play at a high level. It's hard though because I, I I don't know I think the other team in contention head to head stuff but it, it, if this was ten years ago eight years ago whatever I'd say oh that head to head's gonna win out but that's that's not the case all the time you know now there's a there's they go real deep in the criteria it's not it used to just be three things basically and head to head always was the number one so um, I don't know far enough past the head to head who would win out. Um, to be really, really honest on all this stuff when it comes down is that I only focus on our, on our own group. You know, what we have to do in the tournament and then where, where are we with our, with our tie break scenarios. Um, but if you're asking me, should, uh, you know, if that team, should Irvine be there or if the, the seeds won out, I think this is just another great example to the NCA that we have too small of a tournament pool because regardless of who's not gonna go, this has happened to all of us at different times, there's gonna be a team left out that could win the national championship. And that doesn't happen in most sports. Um, you may have a team left out that feels robbed, but a team left out to actually, that could win it, I, I, would, be, I would be hard pressed to find a sport that has that scenario that happens on the regularity of men's volleyball. And the match between Hawaii and yeah, um, well, I think if Irvine plays like they did tonight, it's going to be a great match. Um, but I, you know, I, I, I think Hawaii's playing really well. They played great tonight. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of experience on Hawaii's team in these type of matches. Um, and uh, I, I'm sure they'll be well prepped and, and they'll be ready to go. But, uh, you know, these tournaments are dangerous. We've seen these in all sorts of sports, you know, and you get the team and they're playing at home and they're playing well and they just had a good win tonight. Um, you know, I, I I don't really want to make a prediction. I have too much respect for both teams. 
Thank you. Okay, thank you guys.